Painting has always been something I enjoyed. It relaxes me. It opens my mind to creativity and lets me express whatever I am feeling. Now, I get many people telling me, I wish I knew how to paint or I wish I knew how to paint as much as you do. And the problem is that many of those people are too scared to even try. But I'll let you in on a little secret. The ability to paint is not a gift. It is a skill. And with any skill, the more you practice, the better at it you become. Today, I'm hoping to help many of you with a bit of a push, give you some recommendations and revisit an old project of mine to see how my skills have improved or not in the past uh, couple of years. So stick around. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. More on that later. The fear of failure, something that holds a lot of us back in many aspects of our lives. And that fear sometimes is the cause of us not knowing how awesome or successful we could become at anything we would like to try. For a while now, people have asked me to paint models for them uh, in exchange for money, of course. And I tend to refuse because I always felt I wasn't really good enough to charge money for it. That was until I started looking online, doing some research to see what people sell and how much they sell them for. Uh, well, needless to say, I, um, it made me realize I seriously need to let go of my fear and just get to it. Because while I'm not an expert at it, I'm good enough. So I partnered up with Photos Mint. It started as us partnering up through my Patreon so that I can give back to my supporters by means of exclusive models. But we got to talking a bit more and decided to start a business together. That of selling Photos' original models painted through Etsy in order to test the waters. Photos has a ton of models which I have yet to practice on. But we settled on doing the Cthulhu. Cthulhu? Cthulhu first? Yes, that one. Cthulhu. And with some test models, we have finalized the first two color combos and the final product, which I think looks absolutely awesome. The point of all this is that I am just starting out at this. Painting for myself and painting for others are two completely different things. Now, when painting for others, you want to provide an excellent finished product. And no matter how good you are, you will still criticize yourself. When I'm painting just for myself, I can let go, I can experiment and try new techniques. However, that doesn't mean you can't start somewhere. Many of you who watch this channel probably have a 3D printer at home. Many of those also have a resin or a MSLA printer. A 3D printer, while can cost a few hundred euro, can save you a ton of money in the long run, especially if you want to practice painting miniatures and models. And as soon after that, it can help you earn money. A resin printer will always be ideal for miniatures, even larger models, especially if you want to save time on post-processing and you want an incredibly stupid amount of details to come out. Personally, if you don't want to spend a lot, I would definitely look at the Elego Mars 2, which costs around 200 euro, or possibly the Anacupic Photo Mono. Both will get the job done extremely well and fast. Now, if you want to spend a bit more to get a 4K display screen, to get those like really minute details on the miniatures and much quicker print times. Then there is the Elego Mars Pro 2 at around 299 euro. You can obviously go larger with the Saturn, but good luck finding one of those. You could obviously go with an FDM printer if you are planning to print larger models, but those will still need a lot of post-processing to get a really good finished smooth product to paint on. As for resin, there is no need to go the expensive route either. Most resin costs are very similar, in which case you want the right quality. I mainly use Soraya Tech Fast Resin, which has never let me down so far, whether it was small miniatures or seriously large ones. Alternatively to all this, go on eBay, find some miniature lots, cheap ones to practice on. You'll find plenty, I assure you. Now, I do not, and I repeat, do not, do what I did and buy 150 million bottles of paint before you even start painting. I guarantee that you will not use all of them. And before you know it, some of those bottles have been sitting there for years sealed and have completely dried up. If you want to practice, choose a color scheme, buy five, six bottles of paint and practice on those. This green Cthulhu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu used a total of five colors. 
From those, it's just a matter of experimenting and mixing colors to find new ones to use. Get yourself some black, some white, then find a choice of three colors you want to try out and experiment with and take it from there. Most of the time, airbrushing is used for primer coating, general shading of highlights and shadows, there's no need to spend a ton of money on a dual action airbrush with fancy features, specialized with fine needles and so on. You'll mostly use brushes. So get yourself a cheap gravity fed airbrush if you must, and then some fine tip brushes. Those will be needed much more, trust me. After all that, it's just a matter of practicing. Like for example, this little guy um, by Printed Obsession. Small, detailed, but lots of flat surfaces to practice on. And once again, five colors in total. The beauty of 3D printing is that you can print as many as you want for little cost until you get the process right, until you get the technique down, until you get comfortable with the flow of the paint, with the way you hold the brush. Remember, this is supposed to be fun, not stressful. So go nuts, enjoy yourself, you're practicing a skill and it will get better and better every time you do it. Now in November 2019, I uploaded a video where I painted a Deadpool on this channel. Back then we were moving houses and I used to do print and paint in order to have content to upload while I settle in. I still have that bus right here, of course, and it doesn't look bad at all. In November 2019, it looked absolutely great to me. I was proud of it, proud enough to present it on video. I can look at it now and I feel I could do a much better job nowadays. Better highlights, make it a bit more dynamic. All I had done with this model is paint the base colors, then do some wash, bring out some details, and that's it. Now, since I made this Deadpool, um, it's not like I printed and painted an endless amount of models. I maybe did about 30, 30 more of those. And about 20 of those have been in the last few weeks. The difference is that now I paint to improve and experiment because I want to make a business out of it, rather than just to paint for the sake of painting or content. I can see that I've improved more in the past two weeks than I have in the last two years. The difference being is that I am painting every day now. And the more I paint, the more comfortable I get, the more mistakes I do, but that means more lessons I am learning. Channels like Squidmar and Jazza have been a great motivator for me, so I definitely would recommend you go have a look at them if you haven't already. Back to this Deadpool now. Um, I guess I should put my uh, money or skill where my mouth is. So I will reprint this and have another crack at it and see how different I can make it look. So let's get to it. And since we are talking about learning new skills, well, let's talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey and learn new skills or enhance them. There are thousands of inspiring classes to choose from, such as painting, photography, video, woodworking, Fusion 360, and many, many more. I personally have had a membership to Skillshare for over a year now and have benefited a lot from many classes, which in turn helped me expand my knowledge on many subjects and also be able to diversify my content on this very channel. For me, it's back to basics at the moment and get reacquainted with colors in order to have a better understanding of what colors complement each other and what will look good on my future minis. Now, Skillshare have been generous enough to offer the first thousand of my subscribers to click on the link in the video description, a free trial of premium membership to explore their creativity. Thank you, Skillshare. In the past, I always had this tendency to have a downward light on all my models. For some reason, it felt easier or normal. Nowadays, I try to find the right light source on an object. So in this case, I decided to have a kind of like a bright light coming from the side, which is more in line with the tilt of the head and the open eye. For assistance, what I tend to do is shine a light from the model and then take a photo for reference. After a quick base coat, I do some white airbrushing for the highlights. Now, I'll admit I made many mistakes even while doing this model, but that's okay, because those mistakes are what will help me improve. Like for example, Doing the highlights on some colors is extremely tricky, like red. Just adding white to a color doesn't mean it will make it brighter. White simply desaturates a color 
and in this case, making it more pink. And pink is not what I want. I just want to make it brighter. So in this case, what I should have done is coated the model with the brightest red uh, that I could find. And instead of working my way to the highlights, I should have worked downwards to the shadows. The colors would have looked much more natural. Now, having mostly worked on smaller models recently, it occurred to me also that with bigger models, it is important to work on smaller areas at a time. This way, the paint doesn't get to dry too quickly or the blending does not turn out as smooth as you'd want. However, as I was making these, let's call them mistakes along the way, I decided to change the style at that point and opted to go for a more comic book style look rather than a true to life feel. I also took it upon myself to try and not use washes where possible. Washes tend to dull the final result. So instead I took the time to go over the shadows and crevices. Now, am I happy with the final result? Well, yes, but maybe not as much as I wanted. I do love the dramatic comic book uh, style look of it. It's definitely very different from the first one I did, but as I said, it's more lessons learned, especially with the highlights. While the light source worked, it somehow looks more like Deadpool was hit in the face with a brick of coke rather than light. I mean, it is Deadpool, so you know, that kind of works too. But alas, as I said, lessons learned. The reason why I decided not to paint over the original was twofold. First, Having physical comparison both in hand and not just on camera is much better. The second reason is because it will be a constant reminder of how much your skill changes and evolves. I mean, three months ago, I had no knowledge of OSL. It amazes me how people can do it, but I started practicing it now and I'll get there eventually. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to set myself a reminder. In six months time, I will reprint and repaint the Deadpool model yet again and that way I can see the evolution of my painting skills. Like in the meantime, if you have any knowledge or const constructive criticism to part with, please let me know in the comments below what I could have done differently. I'm always up for learning, so I'll take anything I can. That is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you like these type of videos, please let me know. If you want to see more about painting and how I'm teaching myself how to paint, just also let me know, happy to do more videos like this. Um, I'm constantly changing things up on the channel as you probably know by now, but it's always good to kind of like, you know, make some match as much as possible. In the meantime, I want to thank my Patreons for supporting this channel so much, allowing me to do uh, what I am doing. If you're up for supporting me and helping me continue this endeavor on YouTube, please check out my Patreon link in the video description. I also want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. In the meantime, that is it for me. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, help me hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. And as always, happy making guys.